to have Dr. Patricia Gillivan Murphy, a clinical specialist, speech and language therapist from the Matter Hospital, uh, to, to come to talk to us. Thank you very much, Patricia. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you to um, Professor Hutchinson and to Maria Hickey for issuing this invitation to me. So I'm happy to have a focus, change of focus now onto voice problems. My first encounter with spasmodic dysphonia, which is what I'm going to be talking about, was actually when I just started my first job. And I met a, a lady who really impressed me at the time. She had a very severe voice disorder, which happened to be spasmodic dysphonia. And she was telling me that she was going back and forth to England for botulinum toxin injections. And I remember being really, really bothered by the fact that this lady had a really disabling condition and was also having the added problem of having to travel to, to the UK. So myself and my ENT colleague decided to go with her to the UK, observe the injection procedure, came back to the Iron Ear and started a, a service at that time. So moving on from there, just moving on, I now work in the Matter Hospital and um, I'm currently based in the new Whitty Wing. If anyone has been into the Matter recently, this is a really state-of-the-art um, extension and we have we're setting up a voice and swallow clinic there so we see a range of voice problems but we have been seeing patients with spasmodic dysphonia and carrying out some botulinum toxin injections in relation to speech production there are three different systems involved so looking at the uh, image ahead so starting from the lungs the lungs is where the air is produced so the air is expired moves up towards the larynx to the vocal cords and through the action of the air and the muscles in the vocal cords sound is produced and the sound then travels superiorly up into the mouth and the throat and it's the muscles lips tongue jaw that produce the sounds and give meaningful speech so three different systems lots of muscles and nerves a very complex system spasmodic dysphonia is described as a focal laryngeal dystonia affecting the vocal folds. We have two vocal folds and they're positioned in your larynx just where your Adam's apple is. Interestingly, it was first described in 1871, but it was considered to be a psychological disorder. And it's only really in the last, well, up to the 1980s then that it was redefined as a, as a form of dystonia. It is now classified as a rare disease by the National Institute of Health in the USA. The prevalence is that the, for every 100,000 people, 14 people will have spasmodic dysphonia. Again, a trend here with predominantly affects males, more so than, sorry, females rather than males, with a ratio of 2.5 to 1. And interestingly, a paper has been produced in India where the opposite is the case is predominantly in males rather than females, so that's certainly going to be interesting to look at. Spasmodic dysphonia may occur in isolation or it may occur with dystonia in other, other body parts. And the onset is usually between the ages of 30 and 50 years. So a little bit younger than some of the uh, other dystonias that we, we heard about. The cause is unknown, but it is considered to be a disorder of the central nervous system with genetic and environmental problems. There Evening up. <laughs> so as a person stops doing the E, you can hear the, the release of the breath. So that's why the, the breath can be can be affected. In terms of diagnosis, it's challenging. Um, it is a clinical diagnosis, so. I suffer from spasmodic dysphonia. Okay. And I'm always petrified when I have to speak because sometimes when I'm speaking for a while, it gets all right and I'm able to speak clearly. But if the phone rings, the frustration when I pick up the phone as to whether my voice is going to come out or not, I don't know, or I'll answer the phone and one of my friends will say, why are you crying? Yes, 
Mm. Or, are you sick? Have you got a cold? Mm -hmm. I say, no, it's all right, it's only my voice. And I find that very frustrating. Sometimes nothing comes out. Mm. Or a whisper will come out. But the most devastating thing for me is I trained as a singer. Yes. And singing was my life. And in 24 hours, it was gone. And that was my hobby as well. Yes, I think you're, you're capturing, I mean, you're, you're capturing what I can't capture because you, you live with this. Yeah. Um, and I think for, also for singers, it, it has a huge impact on their lives because, and for people who aren't professional singers, people like to sing for pleasure. Yeah. I would just, I'm not going to give general advice, but just what you might find useful going to the phone is just making some sound humming or just warming up your voice so that that first um, word that comes out is not one that you're wondering about. I'm not so just warm up on the way, uh, humming or humming is a, is a really good thing to do because it's a, it's rel the vocal cords come together in a, in a fairly relaxed well, I'm, way. I'm, I'm blessed with the uh, speech therapists that I have.